What are the intercepts of the function f of t is equal to 2 times t minus 1 times t plus 2 times t minus 3? All right, so first thing is, what do they mean by intercepts? Well, there's really two sets of intercepts that we have to be familiar with. We have to know uh, about the uh, y-intercepts. I'll just label it y and t for intercepts. And that means basically if you had, let's say, a function, let's just say it was a linear line, uh, the y-intercept is the location on the y-axis where the graph or the function intersects that y-axis, okay? And then we also have stuff known as the x-intercept. And that's going to be where the function intercepts now the x-axis. So in this example, the function intersects the x-axis right at that, roughly at that point, right there. Okay? Cool. So... Keeping that in mind, how do we now, let me just get rid of that line. So keeping that in mind, how do we now get, uh, how do we now figure that out given this function, right? How do we do that? Well, you have to keep in mind that when we're finding the y-intercept, right? Pretend this is the point on your graph, okay? You know something special about these coordinate, about this particular coordinate, and you also know something special about this coordinate. You also know something about special about that coordinate. And they all have these special things in common. Uh, namely, that the value of x must equal 0. Okay? So it's going to be an ordered pair of 0, comma, something. All right? The x value will be 0, and the y value we're not really sure of. So what that means... Now remember... When I say the y value, y is just another you know, variable for the function's value at a particular location on the x-axis. Now, I know that's t, right? but this is like saying f of x. This is just a variable, okay? You can call this the t-axis if you want, or you can call it the x. It doesn't make a difference. What I like to do is I like to look at this as if it said y, okay? So I'm just going to rewrite it. So y is equal to now 2 times t minus 1 times t plus 2, times t minus 3. Now I know that to find my y-intercept value, x will equal 0. What that means is that everywhere in my function I see an x value, or in this case a t value, and maybe what we should do is just, because we're used to, you know, we're used to dealing with x right on the x-axis, right on the horizontal axis. It's almost known as the x-axis, right? It's kind of the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis is the y-axis. In this problem, the t is basically the x-axis, more or less, and the y would be like the f of t, all right? Uh, intercept. But I think to just simplify it, right, why don't we just get rid of this as t's and just plug in our x's there, okay? That should hopefully make it a little easier. Uh, now, I know that everywhere I see then x in my equation, it's going to be 0. So I'm going to plug in the values of 0 where I see x. So it's going to be y is equal to 2 times then 0 minus 1, 0 plus 2, 0 minus 3. So this simplifies down to now y is equal to 2 times negative 1 times positive 2 times negative 3. You got two negatives in here overall, it's all multiplied, so you know y is going to be positive, right? And then you can do two times two if you want, which is four, and then four times the three is going to be 12. And then anything times one, it's going to be itself. Remember, I know that's negative one, but I already took that into account. I already did that before. So y is equal to positive 12. You get rid of the positive sign, you really don't need it. So the y value is equal to 12. This is your y-intercept. Y-intercept, all right? In other words, when x is going to be zero, when x is 0, the y value will be 12. Okay? So why don't we just take this and keep it on the side? That's the y-intercept. Now, what do we need to do for the x-intercept? Well, it turns out a very similar process, right? We're going to know something unique about all of the x values, uh, all of the x-intercepts, I should say, right? Every single, and that's where the function would cross the x-axis, okay? So basically, all these points here in red have in common... What they have in common is that the y value this time is going to be 0, right? The y value is going to be 0, and x, we really don't know what it is. At the y value of that point 0, the y value of that point 0, the y value of that point 0, but they're all different x values. These are positive x values, these are negative x values, so we're not really sure, okay? But what we will know for certain is the y value. So 
In this particular case, what we're going to do is again, let me just rewrite the function. So y is equal to then 2 times x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 3. We're going to plug in a 0 for y, okay? That's what we're going to do. Now, x minus 1, x plus 2, and then x minus 3. Now what we can do from here is we can actually set each of these terms that you have here equal to zero on its own, okay? You can set all of them equal to zero, all right? So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna do two is equal to zero. Now I know that's like, wait a minute, that doesn't even make sense. That's fine, it doesn't make sense. It's not gonna make sense, so just ignore it. Then we're gonna have x minus one equals zero. Then we're going to have x plus two is equal to zero. And then we're gonna do x minus three is equal to zero. In other words, what I'm saying is that to make this function be zero, this term could be zero, right? If x, let's say if x hypothetically were, were a positive one. Oh, I'm already giving it away. But if x were positive one, what would this term become? It would be zero, right? Positive one minus one is gonna be zero. If this thing now is zero, what is this, the value of this? I don't care what these are, <laughs> right? As long as they're defined, which they will be defined, there'll be some number. I don't care what they are though, because it's gonna be zero, right? Same thing with this. If this could be zero at some point, this term, then wouldn't this whole thing be zero as well because it's all multiplied, right? That's what I'm trying to find out. I'm saying if this thing were zero, if this thing right here, which is the same thing as what I wrote down here, could be equal to zero, then I know that this whole term would be zero, right? The whole function, okay? What's the value already? You already know. What is it? Negative two, right? You can already tell. And then how about here? Right? You can already tell. It should be a three, right? So watch what's going to happen. Solve this now. Do the math. Plus one on both sides. The ones cancel. X is equal to positive one. Oh my goodness. That's what we said. Do the math here. Minus two from both sides. Great. Twos cancel. X is equal to negative two, right? Do the math. Plus three on both sides. The threes cancel, oh my goodness, look, it's a positive three. That's what you told me it would be. And these are now known as the x-intercepts. Meaning, when the graph uh, has a y value of zero, okay? When the graph has a y value of zero, these are not multiplied, these are not coordinates, okay? When the graph has a y value of zero, x could be one, x could be negative two, and x could be three, okay? Ordering this then from lowest to greatest, I'm just gonna move these around just to make it look nice. And there you got it, okay? These are now the x-intercepts. And those are all the intercepts, and that's it. Right, now, if you don't trust me, trust the calculator. Go to the calculator, plug in your function, right? So hit two times, uh, you don't even need to hit times, you can just do parentheses, then do x minus one, don't plug in the t, just plug in the x. Parent open parentheses, x plus two. Okay, close parentheses, open parentheses, x minus three. All right, then close them up, hit graph. Wow, look look at where this is crossing the x-axis. Does it look like it's crossing it at negative two, right? Doesn't it look like it's crossing it also here at positive one? Doesn't it look like it's crossing it here over positive three? And isn't that what we said over here, right? If you still don't believe me, go to the table, hit second graph, okay? Now look. Where? Oh, here, look. When x is negative 2, what should y be? 0. That's what it says over here, right? When x is then going to be 1, y should be 0. Look, that's what it said over here. Isn't this beautiful? When x is going to be 3, y should also be 0. Look, isn't that what we said over here? Now, for the final test, we also said the y-intercept, meaning when x is 0, y should be 12. Is that going to be the case? Well, let's go up to x is 0. Oh my goodness, x is 0, y is 12. Huh. Would you look at that? Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope this helps. And if it does, if you don't mind giving us a hand, that'd be awesome. Like, subscribe, even tell some of your classmates, all right? That's the best way to help us out. We appreciate it. Take care.